Hello, I'm your host, Cynthia, and welcome to Fantasy Fridays. We are reading J.R.L. Tolkien's The Hobbit. This is Chapter 2, Episode 2. Dwarves can make a fire almost anywhere out of almost anything, wind or no wind, but they could not do it that night, not even Owen Glowen, who are especially good at it. Then one of the ponies took fright at nothing and bolted. He got into the river before they could catch him, and before they could get him out again, Philly and Killy were nearly drowned, and all the baggage that he had carried was washed away off of him. Of course, it was mostly food, and there was mighty little left for supper and less for breakfast. There they all sat, glum and wet and muttering, while Owen and Glowen went on trying to light a fire and quarreling about it. Bilbo is sadly reflecting that the adventure are not going all pony rides in May's sunshine, when Balin, who was always their lookout man, said, There's a light over there. There was a hill some way off with trees on it, pretty thick in parts. Out of the dark mass of the trees they could see a light shining, a reddish comfortable looking light, as if it might be a fire or torches twinkling. When they had looked at it for some while, they fell to it arguing. Some said no, and some said yes. Some said they could go and see, and anything was better than, than little supper, little breakfast, and wet clothes all night. Others said, these parts are none too well known and are too near the mountains. Travelers seldom come this way now. Old maps are no use. Things have changed for the worse, and the road is unguarded. They have seldom ever heard of the kings around here, and the less inquisitive you are as you go along, the less trouble you are likely to find, some said. After all, there are fourteen of us, others said. Where has Gandalf got to? They remark was repeated by everybody. Then the rain began to pour down worse than ever, and Owen and Glowen began to fight. That settled it. After all, we have got a burglar with us, they said. And so they made off, leading their ponies with all due and proper caution in the direction of the light. They came to the hill and soon were in the wood. Up the hill they went, but there was no proper path to be seen, such as it might lead to a house or a farm, and they do what they could. They may deal with rustling and cracking and creaking, and a good deal of grumbling and dratting as they went through the trees in the pitch dark. Suddenly, the red light shone out very bright through the tree trunks not far ahead. Now it's a burglar's turn, they said, meaning Bilbo. You must go on and find out all about the light and what it's for, and if it's all perfectly safe and canny, said Thorin to the hobbit, now scuttle off and come back quick if all is well. If not, come back if you can. If you can't, hoot twice like a barn owl and once like a screech owl, and we will do what we can. If Bilbo had to go before he could explain that he could not hoot even once like any kind of owl any more than fly like a bat, but at any rate, hobbits can move quietly in the woods, absolutely quietly. They take a pride in it, and Bilbo had sniffed more than once at what he called all this dwarvish racket as they went along. I don't suppose you or I would notice anything at all on a windy night, not if the whole cavalcade had passed two feet off. As for Bilbo, walking primarily towards the red light, I don't suppose even a weasel could have stirred a whisker at it, so naturally he got right up to the fire, for far it was, without disturbing anyone, and this is what he saw. Three very large persons sitting around a very large fire of beech logs. They were tossing, toasting mutton long on spits of wood and licking the gravy off their fingers. There was a fine, toothsome smell, and there was a barrel of good drink at hand, and they were drinking out of jugs, but they were trolls, obviously trolls. Even Bilbo, in spite of his sheltered life, could see that from the great heavy faces on them, and their size, and the shape of their legs, not to mention their language, which was not drawing from fashion at all. Mutton yesterday, mutton today, and blimey if it, it doesn't look like mutton again tomorrow, said one of the patrols. Never a blinking bit of man flesh have we had long enough, said a second. What the 
L. William was thinking to bring us into these parts at all. Beats me. And the drink running short, what's more, he said, jogging the elbow of William, who was taking a pull at his jug. William choked. Shut your mouth, he said as soon as he could. You can't expect folk to stop here forever just to be it by you and Bert. You've eight village and half between you since you come down from the mountains. How much more do you want? Any time has been our way when you'd have said thank you, Bill, for a nice big old fat belly mutton like what it, this is. He took a big bite off the sheep's leg he was toasting and wiped his lips on his sleeve. Yes, I am afraid trolls do behave like that, even those with the one only one head. After hearing all of this, Bilbo ought to have done something at once. Either he should have gone back quietly and warned his friends that they were three fair-sized trolls at hand in a nasty mood, quite likely to try a toasted dwarf or even a pony for a change, or else he should have done a bit of good quick burglaring. A really first-class legendary burglar would, at this point, have picked the troll's pockets. This is nearly always worthwhile if he can manage it. Pinched the very mutton off the spits, purloined the beer, and walked off without their noticing him. Other, more practical, but less professional pride would perhaps have stuck a dagger into each of them before they observed it. Then the night could have been spent cheerily. Bilbo knew it. He had a really good many things he had never seen or done. He was very much alarmed as well as disgusted. He wished for himself a hundred miles away, and yet... And yet somehow he could not go straight back to Thorin and company empty-handed. So he stood and hesitated in the shadows. The various burglar's proceedings he had heard of picking the troll's pockets seemed the least difficult. So at last he crept behind the tree just behind William. Bert and Tom went off the, to the barrel. William was having another drink. Then Bilbo plucked up courage to put his little hand in William's enormous pocket. There was a purse in it. A big bag to Bilbo. Ha, he thought, warming to his new work as he lifted carefully out. This is a beginning. It was. Trolls' purses are the mischief, and this was no exception. Er, who are you? It squeaked as it l left the pocket, and William turned around at once and grabbed Bilbo by the neck before he could duck behind the tree. Blimey, Bert, look what I've copped, said William. What is it? said the others coming up. Blimey, if I knows. What are you? Bilbo Baggins, a, a hobbit, said poor Bilbo, shaking all over and wondering how to make owl noises before they throttle him. A bur hobbit? Said, they said a bit startled. Trolls are slow in the uptake and mighty suspicious about anything new to them. What has a bur hobbit got to do with my pocket anyway? said William. And you're and can you cook em? said Tom. You can try, said Bert, picking up a skewer. He wouldn't make above a mouthful, said William, who had already had a fine supper, not when he had skinned and boned. Perhaps they are more like em round about, and we can make a pie, said Bert. Here, here you, are there any more of your sort sneaking in these here woods, you nasty little rabbits? He said, looking at the hobbit's furry feet, as he picked him up by the toes and shook him. Yes, lots, said Bilbo, before remembering not to give his friends away. No, none at all, not one, he said immediately afterwards. What do you mean, said Bert, holding him right away by the hair this time. What I say, Bilbo, gasping, and please don't cook me, sir. I'm a good cook myself, and cook better than this cook. And if you see what I mean, I'll cook beautifully for you, a perfectly beautiful breakfast for you. If only you won't have me for supper. Poor little Bligar, said William. He already had as much supper as he could hold, as he had lots of beer. Poor little Bligar, let him go. Not till he says what he means by lots and none at all, said Bert. I don't want to have me throat cut in me sleep. Hold his toes in the fire till he talks. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Hobbit, and come join me next Friday for more. And while you're waiting for the next episode, come check out my store at sinfularts.ca. Or if you're feeling generous, go to my Ko-fi page.